Barakatai Yahawa, Barakatai Yahusha, Barakatai Yahawa, Barakatai Yahusha, Barakatai Yahawa, Barakatai Yahusha, Bashem, Rakakodash. Double honor to the apostles, the elders. Salutations to you, sincere brothers, teaching and truth and in sincerity. This lesson will be entitled, He That Love His Son. Source, World Star Hip Hop video is entitled, He's Gonna Be a Problem. This badass jit doesn't listen to authority. Uploaded on January the 4th, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down! <laughs> Sit down! <laughs> I'm so tired of him. I am so tired of him. <laughs> Sit down! <laughs> See, he keeps spitting at me. <laughs> Alright, let's focus on some comments. It's called a belt or a switch. Another comment, this video proves that our women don't want to be mothers and they take motherhood as a joke. Dumb fucks laughing, making it seem like it's cute. Bust that little dude's ass quick. Another comment. That's because his mom didn't need a man. Hey, some people just stupid. This shit ain't funny. Last comment. He'll eat a cop bullet one day. Point blank, period. Ecclesiasticus 16 and 1, desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. And at this time frame, all right, this bastard that we just witnessed on the video is unprofitable, okay? Neither delight in ungodly sons, right? And he's considered as ungodly. Why? Because he is not showing any reverence to his father or mother, all right? And at this time frame, I speculate it to be his mom. However, most importantly, it, w it was some authority figure that he was not obeying. So he's considered as unprofitable as well as ungodly. Verse 2, though they multiply, Rejoice not in them, except the fear of the Lord Yahweh be with them. Right, because although they multiply, that judgment is still pending from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Now, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and part of the fear of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is having is having honor. For your father and your mother. All right. Verse 3. Trust not thou in their life. Neither respect their multitude. So just because the Most High has spared their life. Okay. They have got up in age. At the end of the day. They still have to pay for those sins. For one that is just is better than a thousand. Going into the elect man within the nation of Israel, 12,000 out of each tribe, which is a grand total of 144,000. And better it is to die without children than to have them that are ungodly. Right. So if a person doesn't have any children, that person is blessed compared to a person that has five children, and those children are unprofitable or ungodly. Why? Because these kids are created in vain. All right? 
there are memorials for what not to do and examples that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah has made, okay, to instill fear within our nation. Okay. Second precept. Proverbs 13 and 24. He that spareth his rod hate his son. Right. Meaning if you spare your rod, you are restraining from whooping him. You are restraining from um, um, promoting discipline. Okay. So if you hate your son, then you will let him do whatever he wants. And at the end of the day, the Most High is justified for destroying him. Why? Because he's ungodly. And if you are ungodly, that means you are unprofitable. Okay? And you will go down. Okay? Meaning your son will go down for a memorial of how not to act. Okay, but he that loveth him chasteneth him be times and be times in the Hebrew is going into diligent, meaning ongoing. Every time your son goes off, every time your daughter goes off, you supposed to discipline them. Okay, keep them on the straight and narrow point blank period. Okay. You're supposed to instill in them the law, statutes, and the commandments, okay? And how to act accordingly. How to utilize the law, okay, within the spirit. As well as applying common sense. For example, teaching your son not to commit adultery. Teaching your daughter not to be a whore. All right? Point blank, period. But if you don't love your daughter, if you don't love your son, then you let them go astray. Which proves that you hate your son, you hate your daughter. Okay? Now the Most High is justified in destroying them. Ecclesiasticus 30 and 1. He that loved his son calls him off to feel the rod that he may have joy of him in the end. Why? Because that discipline will prolong his life. Okay? He that chasteneth his son shall have joy in him. Right? Because that discipline makes him a better man. Makes him an effective man, okay, and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance, right, so now you are proud of your son, all right, when he has um, come of age, okay, you're bragging about your son to your friends, to your family members, you know, in a good way, well, hey, he works, um, he hasn't been in trouble with the law. He doesn't use drugs, you know, and so on and so forth. Going back into those instructions you gave to him, okay, when he was little. He that teaches son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Right. Verse 4. And verse 3 is, is actually literal, literally, okay? It's literal. Verse 4, though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead, all right? For he have left one behind him that is like himself, all right? Literally. Verse 5, while he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him, and when he died, he was not sorrowful, right? Because you know he's going to be okay, because he's going to continue to follow the ways that you have instructed to him going back when he was a child. Okay? 
He left behind him an avenger against his enemies and one that shall requite kindness to his friends. He that make too much of his son shall bind up his wounds and his bowels will be troubled at every cry. All right. Verse eight. And horse not broken become headstrong and a child left to himself will be willful. OK. And we have seen an example of that. OK. Going into the video that started off this lesson. Verse 9, conquer thy child, and he shall make thee afraid. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. All right? So you're supposed to discipline your child whenever he goes off. Uh, for example, that little boy, when he was told to sit down, now, by right, he's supposed to sit down at the first command, okay? Now, if you have to tell him two and three times to sit down, you got to beat his ass, point blank period, okay? And then you let him know afterwards, this is why you got your ass whooped, because you did not follow my fucking commands. Verse 10, laugh not with him, lest thou have sorrow with him, and least thou gnash thy teeth in the end. And remember a comment that was posted. He'll eat a cop bullet soon. Okay? Going back into when he was not corrected as a child. You know, those authority figures in the car were laughing at him. And he's thinking that's cool. Okay? He's been grown to be a fucking degenerate. All right? Verse 11. Give him no liberty in his youth. No liberty. All right? When he does something, get on his ass. And wink not at his follies. Right? So correct him. All right? And this is an ongoing process. Verse 12, bow down his neck. Wow, it's like you bow down his neck while he is young and beat him on the sides while he is a child. Least he wax stubborn and be disobedient unto thee and so bring sorrow to thine heart. Right. And as he gets older, he constantly stays into something which is stressing you out, but all of that shit goes back to you not doing what you were supposed to do. Verse 13, chastise thy son and hold him to labor, lest his lewd behavior, and lewd means wickedness, be an offense unto thee. All right? So when your child is going off, you're supposed to uh, discipline him. All right. You supposed to let those hammers fly. Okay. A person that spareth his rod hate his son. Okay. Because at the end of the day, if you don't chastise him, the most high is gonna bring that judgment. Lord willing, this was an edifying lesson. Shalom.